Hi, I'm Lee, I'm an energy intuitive and every month I take the pulse of what's going on energetically. Looking ahead for April 2019, there are three themes we're exploring. The past meeting the future, creative energy on a high and unexpected events. Stay tuned for more. Hi everyone, welcome to the energy update for April and well done for surviving March. It was quite a roller coaster in March of really supercharged energy, lots of release coming alongside that. So one of the themes that has been circulating that I've been hearing from people and experiencing myself is energetic overwhelm. So feeling like you are at capacity with how much you can feel, experience, process. And for most of us, what happens is that feeling breaks quite quickly and we are plunged back into space, life force energy. For those of you that are feeling particularly stuck or particularly as if the overwhelm has just got you by the neck and you can't move, it's gonna be really important for you to focus on support in this coming month. Support of the self, so to not beat yourself up if you're feeling like a lot is moving through you. That's the first way that we stop ourselves and it's how most of us have been trained to treat ourselves, not necessarily with kindness. So hey, if you're having a rough time, be okay with the fact that you're having a rough time and ask yourself, what do I need to get through this? Do I need outer support? Do I need to support myself on a more inner level? Do I need to hold a space and an intention for this to change? And just lean into any one or all of those three as much as you can in April. Because there is a lot of life force energy pulsing through people right now. And for some, it can be a resistance to that next level when we get stuck or fall onto the floor and feel like we can't move. One thing that I have noticed, and this has been coming to me intuitively over the last week, is there is this new low appearing on the planet. You know, we've all kind of been here for many years watching these symptoms of the rising consciousness show up. But one thing that came to me very strongly just a few days ago was there is a new low beginning to show up for people and it's deadness and detachment. So whether this is you experiencing this yourself as a new energy symptom of overwhelm, or perhaps you're seeing people in your life checking out, switching off, not very present when you're with them, or finding ways to numb out or switch off. This is actually going round. And as is often the case, when we go through tough times, we have this mythic idea that feels really true that we're the only ones going through it. And actually for most energetically sensitive or aware people, whenever there's something moving through the collective, whenever there are certain energies going on at a planetary level, we all get affected by them. But this theme of deadness or detachment came to me very strongly a few days ago as a new kind of low point in the overwhelm. So you might not be experiencing that, but you might notice that going on for other people. So remember, you might be the person to invite them to a conversation that helps them open up again, or you might be the remedy they need. One thing that we all have to be really mindful of in times like this is not to just react to the behavior that's going on in front of us that might seem strange or defensive or odd. Sure, if you have a repeated pattern with someone and it's an unhealthy or toxic dynamic you're in, maybe you do need to address that or walk away. But I'm talking about the strangers you might meet or people who you notice aren't normally behaving in defensive or switched off ways. They too are just having a reaction to the enormous amount of energy that's going on, the amount of overstimulation, sometimes high levels of fear that are moving through the collective. So remember, you might be the person to offer them a smile, a nice word. Hey, are you okay? You know, is there anything you need? It's an overwhelming time, so it's important to look out for each other and be part of the net for each other in helping each other. I know I'm really grateful when people do that for me, and I'm also aware that I will do that as much as I can, but we're all human. We're all gonna go through our highs and lows as we go through this process. So on the day you can show up, great. On the day you can't, be sure to invite that support to and for yourself. 
The unexpected was something else that was coming up, and this fits in quite well with this other theme of the past meeting the future. Because so many of us are being asked to grow at very rapid rates, what you might be noticing is old memories or even old people showing up in your life, and you're having a chance to review these and see them from a different perspective. Any of you who've followed me for years will know that I've brought this up in various updates over the years. I was shown that that's happening quite strongly on the planet now, this old review of the past as you move into the future. And what that can look like is you feeling very bold and brave about something and embarking on a new relationship or a new quest or a new desire and quite immediately finding a very young part of yourself that is afraid and doesn't want to move forward or perhaps manifesting that in the form of someone else, you know, someone in your life who's like, oh, I don't know if that's a good idea, everything might go wrong, and you go, oh, maybe they're right. And remember, we hire people outside ourselves to play out parts of ourselves. So if that's happening for you in your external life, recognize that whatever fear they have or judgment they have of you, just ask yourself, is this mine too? And are they just playing that out for me? And can I clear that so that I no longer need to be in that vibration when I'm around those people and that I can firmly but kindly say to that person, you know, thanks for being scared for me, but it's okay. I think it's worth a shot. And I know you're probably just trying to protect me, but it's okay. You don't need to worry about me. I'm going to try this out. Worst thing that can happen is it doesn't work. So remember, we're all learning together at the moment how to become upgraded human souls. And I think one of the things that I have encountered many times doing this work, and I certainly know I used to have more of this wiring in my early years with the spiritual path, was this idea that if we're aligned and living a soul-led soul life, then nothing should be going wrong on the human plane, or we shouldn't be having problems on the horizontal and I, I don't ascribe to that belief at all and I've met some really enlightened people and I also see how if you are human in a body on this planet at this time in history there's going to be stuff, there's going to be challenges so that's why I come back to what I said a few minutes ago one of the most important acts of self-love for any of us living at this time is really just being able to lovingly parent and be kind to the parts of ourselves that are scared and they will come up. You cannot embark on growth and not have a historic part of your memory come up that's scared or some people in your life think that you're crazy to do this and you either fight them or believe them. Whereas the best place to get to is a place of neutrality. There will always be fear, but there is always growth too. And lovingly parenting yourself through this time and this growth is going to unleash into you the good stuff right now, which is the other aspect of this month, creative energy, life force energy, the feeling of being able to create things and states in equal measure. So creating things is, you know, I'm going to make this documentary that's going to really help a certain group or I'm going to do a nice piece of art because it's therapy for me or I'm going to create in my kitchen. Equally, creating states. I am just fried this last few months and so I am going to make sure that this month I build in some time for me to do some nice things and for me to just feel peaceful. I'm going to create peace in my life because we do have to take care of this. These things are practices so creative energy and life force energy are going to be there in abundance for us if we can ride the waves of the growth challenges. Remember you're not alone. Sometimes the best way to do this is to reach out to a friend to say, hey, I'm having a bit of a rough time. Can we talk? Or maybe you don't even say you're having a rough time. You just connect with a friend that you like and just say, hey, thinking of you, how are you? When we connect with each other, when we get back into our community formations, whether it's with one person or with a group, we start to alleviate some of that personalized anxiety and we personalize anxiety that is actually quite collective. This is something we have to remember. I always uh, liken it to the ocean, and again, you'll have heard me say this before, but you know how you're swimming in the ocean sometimes and it's you're having a nice time and then all of a sudden you go through this cold patch? Well, the world is like that. People are like that. Energy is like that. And on any given day, 
there are warm patches and cold patches and it's not that the cold patches are a problem, it's more how do we navigate through those and do we keep swimming. So the other aspect of this month is the creative energy on a high, the low which is detachment and the other piece which I shared was where the past meets the future. Part of what's going on at the moment is we're right at this crux point of consciousness shifting on the planet and it's uncomfortable, it's a bit messy and depending on where you look uh, there's a lot of destabil destabilization. But where the past meets the future it's really important to be a futurist and not someone who is stuck in the past. This is why working on our trauma, working on our wounds, working on our pain is really important unless we're not really moving the needle. So, my point being, if you're someone who feels like you've been working on your wounds for years, it might be time to start working on your future. Trust me, if you've got a pattern of working on your wounds, you're going to come back to those wounds. You're not going to forget them overnight. But it might be that you need to start visioning into your future, visioning what you want to create, as simply as this next six days or as grand as this next six years. And perhaps it's both. The reason I say that is, Many sensitives I work with can get stuck in past events or pain or suffering on the planet and feel unable to move beyond it. Usually what helps us move beyond it is to be grateful for what we have today, free of the story of the past, to just recognize, oh, these are the things I have in life, but equally to see a future for ourselves. And that future for ourselves will involve other people too. So. When I talk about the past meeting the future this month, most of you or some of you may have had a, oh, the past. I really want you to lean into the future and to see the future of your life. If we'd have asked you five years ago what your life was going to be like and all the experiences you'd had in this next five years, some of the things you may have known, but there have been a whole bunch of surprises. So this unexpected events this month people from your past coming back in for healing, but also people who want to come towards you with creative energy or life force energy. It's a real thing, but we have to be able to be willing to unfurl ourselves from the sofa, pull the curtains up, open the front door and allow some of it in. And usually when our trauma is really deep or when we've got stuck in a pattern of wound, it's really hard for us to do that. It's the last thing we want to do. So I encourage any of you who feel like you're that person that I'm talking to right now, what would support you this month? To open the curtains, lift up the blinds, let some light in. Allow yourself to feel the positivity in your future, even if your mind wants to talk to you only about fear to do with your future. Remember, if you're fearing your future, you're stuck in the past somewhere because we don't have a dominant fear of our future unless traumatic events from our past are holding us hostage. So, be good to yourself this month in April. It's a really complex energy system right now. The one good thing about that is that things pass really quickly. So, I love the phrase, this too shall pass. And it's something I've used many times in my own very difficult times or dark nights of the soul to remember that it will pass, to remember that there is help all around us and that we can reach out and intend for that help to come in and that will shift things. For the rest of you who are on the creative energy ride, don't forget it's okay that your creative momentum stops every now and then and you might be burning things off. That's just the process of growth. One of the things that came up this month when I was recording um, an mp3 channel for uh, my members club, The Portal, which I'll play a clip of at the end of this video, um, I was really trying to tune in on what was needed and the title that came is The Way of the Sensitive Evolving in Tumultuous Times. And what was interesting about some of the messages in the channel is it was saying those of you who are deeply sensitive, who may have felt you've been awakened for a long time, when the rest of the planet starts to also awaken, where do you think you're going? <laughs> you're moving on again. So sensitives, you might be having a really strong time of upgrade right now, or you might be feeling pushed in ways that are uncomfortable, but it's because 
we too are being asked to shift forward again and find new ways of being, perhaps new relationship with your body, a new relationship with your emotions, a new relationship with nutrition or exercise, a new relationship with your thought patterns, or all of the above. So evolving in tumultuous times is really the, the right phrase for the way of the sensitive at the moment. So within all those highs and lows, remember you're moving and we all are. Okay, thank you for tuning in everybody. Um, I have a brand new book out called Energy Speaks. Thank you so much that so many of you pre-ordered it. It was um, incredible. So I'm thrilled that the book Energy Speaks is now out in the world. The, the, the subtitle for Energy Speaks is Messages from Spirit on Living, Loving and Awakening. It's mostly channeled material. There are lots of exercise in it, exercises in it. I tell my story and there is a brilliant foreword by the fantastic Regina Meredith. So I'm thrilled to announce to celebrate Regina and myself are doing a free online worldwide book launch event and it's on April the 9th and it's free all you have to do is sign up to get the link so you can find that plus the book at this link energyspeaksbook.com energyspeaksbook.com and for all of my other work, my members club, the portal, um, my new mp3, the way of the sensitive and also upcoming live events, you can go to leeharrisenergy.com. We have brand new live events in Denver, Colorado in June and in London, England. Yay! At the end of June. I haven't done an event in London for a couple of years. So I'm doing a full one day workshop, my first, my first one day workshop of intuitive power and I'm at the Unity Church in Denver um, in June doing a special evening called Energy Speaks and that's also available on live stream. So hell of a lot of information for all of you but you can find it all at leeharrisenergy.com or energyspeaksbook.com for the book and for the broadcast. Enough from me, it's been a pleasure to be here. Here is a clip of the MP3. Lots of love until next month. So for many of you who are sensitive souls, the awakening does not and did not happen in your very early life. For many of you, you were only able to fully awaken to who you are the more time went on. And the reason we give you this brief context is because you are living in a time now that is more heightened than ever. In many ways, whatever age you are when you are listening to this, this time frame that you are listening in, and this is being recorded in 2019, is a little like being reborn into a family you do or do not recognize, into a sensitivity level that you do or do not recognize, into a level of emotional crisis that you do or do not recognize. But whether you recognize it or not, with your eyes, with your mind, with memory, you are all feeling it. You are feeling what is moving through the scope of humanity at this time. From 2012 onwards, the heat has gone up on the planet in terms of how many people are being asked to unfurl and unfold themselves into who they are authentically here to be. As a result, everything that is unauthentic, misaligned on your planet is having a radical reform. So you can look at your outer world and see where there are places of discord or disharmony or fight and recognize that this is the struggle of consciousness trying to break free. That is what your spiritually knowing mind can identify. But the reason for this message is what your body identifies. Your body, as a sensitive soul, feels the ripple effect of this emotional movement taking place on the planet. 
And for those of you who have already understood and started to recognize it is time for you to change in these times, as well as simply watch the world around you change, you will be doing quite well much of the time in allowing these new frequencies to come in to and through your body. This is the way 